High up on the roof of the world, communist forces are back in control. In the capital Lhasa, heavily armed troops in armoured vehicles called for calm. While nearby, riot police methodically went door to door. A number of people appear to have been rounded up. Authorities have reportedly ordered all tourists to leave. Beijing, it seems, doesn't want outsiders to see what may come next. And protesters have been given a deadline of midnight Monday local time to turn themselves in and receive lenient treatment. If they don't, they'll be dealt with severely. In the city of Shuahua in nearby Gansu province, home to a large number of Tibetans who also protested, Chinese troops are out in force as well. After six days of riots and open defiance, Beijing is trying desperately to control all information and images. There is scant reporting by China's state-controlled media except to blame everything on the exiled Tibetan leader, the Dalai Lama, and a handful of Buddhist monks. This is a planned and organized destructive activity, mainly carried out by exiles loyal to the Dalai Lama who have penetrated the mainland to organize and plan these activities. But from his home in exile in northern India, the Dalai Lama called for an international investigation into China's crackdown. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, some kind of cultural genocide is taking place. Uh, then also there is some kind of discrimination. The Tibetan in their own land uh, quite often uh, treated as a second class rate. And while the U.S. Secretary of State has urged Beijing to show restraint, China's Hu Jintao, unanimously re-elected as president for another five years this weekend, has a reputation for harshly dealing with unrest in Tibet. Twenty years ago, as party secretary there, he imposed martial law and sent in Chinese troops. Eighteen monks were reportedly killed. President Hu is best known for his call for a harmonious society, a sign that Beijing values stability above all else. But such open defiance by Tibetans now poses perhaps one of the biggest challenges to China's communist rulers since the 1989 Tiananmen Square uprising. John Vores, CNN Beijing.